welcome back. Welcome to episode eight. Episode eight of of the boiler shed. So we are starting to make progress on the on the machine room now. So I'm sure a lot of people watching this will know that I don't that I don't use a lot of machines in my process. It's not something that I'm overly interested in or something that um, I really want to kind of change in, in, in my process in any way, but a bandsaw fits into my, into my process very well. I like to buy big rough sawn stock if possible and a bandsaw is a really nice, a nice way of, of reducing that timber down to something useful. Um, this one was the display model, so it happened to come with all the features, all the extra little bits, um, including this wheel kit, which makes it very handy for moving around on my own. This is a Laguna 18BX. It's a big bandsaw, really lovely bandsaw. I, I tend to do a lot of resawing because, like I said, I like to buy thicker stock so I can really select the piece I need to use. I'm going to show you a little bit of the setup that went into it. I, I'm not going to go into it in very much detail because firstly I, I don't feel very qualified um, and secondly it's a lot of just fiddling about um, which I do love. I do, I do love just pissing about with machines and it is that is my favourite part of using machinery, it's kind of messing about with them. So, um, first job is dropping the top wheel down with that big lever, lever you saw and installing the blade. These are big, huge long blades, a um, bit scary to handle but fine. It's always a little bit of a fiddle. I find fitting a bandsaw blade um, mainly because of kind of how flimsy it is before there's any tension on the blade. It, it it can be quite a difficult thing to kind of get lined up all the way around. This bandsaw I found not not too bad. It, there's a lot of very nicely done stuff that makes it easier. Here you can see me tensioning the blade. Really nice guide on the side. Um, I don't know how precise that is, but we'll see when I start using it. Once the blade was tensioned, I could balance the top wheel. So the, lead, the knob you see me turning on the back um, makes the wheel lean forwards or backwards, which helps you have the blade running on the centre of the wheel. This bandsaw helpfully has a little window, so you can see the blade moving forwards and backwards. Obviously, on a smaller machine, this has never been a problem. You don't need the window, so I th that that amongst many other things, I was really impressed with this machine. It seems like there's a lot of thought that's gone into it. Once the blade was in, running in the centre of the wheels and under tension, I could set the guides. So these are ceramic guides. Quite simple to adjust but a fiddle as they always are it, this didn't take too 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 long really um, it's something that i'm not well practiced in and it's something i'd like to know more about is all the fine adjustments of machinery but i know enough to get me started i use a banknote to just have the space between the blade and the guides. The thickness of that note, if, it, if the blade and the guide just about hold that note but still allow me to remove it, that is just about the gap I want one when the blade's running. Keep the blade running nice and straight. This um, plate around the blade here, the blue plate, you can see it sits below the surface of the table. That's purely because at this point I forgot to do anything about that um, and level it up later on. The next job was to make sure the table was 
square to the blade in all directions. So this was a bit of fiddling, um, but really not that difficult once I kind of knew what what bolts I was adjusting. There's a very heavy kind of mounting plate under this table where you can just make very, very slight adjustments to the to the level of the table. Um, it took a little back and forth, but didn't take too long, really. Once I was all square and level, I could have the first test run. So this is a single phase machine, um, but with the big um, 16 amp blue plugs. The I had a project straight away for this song, so I started cutting up the pieces for what will become the timber rack. Timber storage is something that I've always wanted a better solution to. In my workshop, the previous workshop, I had a really high shelf and I had timber stacked under the bench and timber everywhere and I couldn't really hold much stock and it just becomes a mess and you don't know what you've got and it's a nightmare. So I really wanted to kind of intentionally take a bit of time to do this right. It's still reasonably crudely put together but absolutely strong enough and adequate for what I'm going to do. So this is, there is four uprights with five shelves in, I believe. They span a distance of about two and a half metres, maybe uh, 2.4 metres, so a full length stud. on the wall um, a bit, bit of a challenge just because of the weight of them they're not on the floor they're, they're fully suspended and supported just on the on the wall so um, they needed a fair few fixings and, and good big raw plugs in the walls but once I had these first two up I gave it a quick strength test and convinced myself that it was going to be absolutely fine uh, <laughs> I had a message on, on Instagram at this point that said how do you calculate how much timber, how much weight that can hold or um, and to be honest I don't, it's just I reckon that'll be fine So you just saw me taking notches out of the back um, those are, you see them Above the second shelf, between the second and third shelf, there. That's for what will be trunking that will carry power around the room. Once, once the the timber rack was on the wall, I could bring all the timber over from the other workshop. Um, the rest of it, I should say, we brought a lot of the bigger pieces when we had the van, when we got the van saw, um, and I could start loading up the timber rack. This took me quite a while and we'll get back to that a bit later but here you can see dad just starting to put the trunk in on the walls for the power you can see there's two consumer units on the wall that's three phase and single phase power i don't know whether i'll need three phase but handy to have these are the blue 16 amp plugs i mentioned that the bandsaw uses so i wanted an area for small pieces I don't like keeping loads of small pieces of timber, but I wanted a dedicated place, a dedicated place to keep some. So hence this kind of under slung shelf and Good idea to do the long kind of one. more shelving added underneath, which you'll see shortly. This trunking goes halfway around the room and then stops for now. So 
I will run power around the other side, but I'm undecided whether I want to run it under the floor or not. So it just kind of um, stops here for now. I added a couple of normal 13 amp sockets as well along while we were while we were doing it. Each of these machines is on their own breaker, something that fortunately Dad could help me out with because it's a little kind of beyond my expertise, but um, it did all go together reasonably quickly. I mean, Dad managed to do all the wiring in a, in a day. It was fantastic, really. So, next time, I took delivery of the next machine, another Laguna machine, um, which we will put together. Here you can see it in action. We will um, start installing some of the ducting for the extractor, as well as talking a little bit how I organised the timber rack. This was took took a bit of thinking. Uh, Thank you so much for watching.